This video is brought to you by Altium. This is the same microwave oven from which I salvaged this high ampere transformer for building a smart building machine so that I can make different battery packs for my upcoming quadcopter projects and electric bikes. I will provide a link in the description if you want to make this low cost semi automatic spot welding machine. Anyways, since then this microwave oven is just lying around and I just thought why not to convert this microwave oven into a mini refrigerator or mini fridge or a mini freezer. This video is going to be very informative for the beginners as I will be explaining each and every detail including the refrigerator parts. I will also talk about how to identify the compressor case charging pipe, suction pipe and discharge pipe. I will also practically show you how to perform wills, how to find and fix gauge leakage etc. So if you watch this video from start to the very end, I'm sure you will be able to make any size DIY refrigerator, fridge or freezer. So let's go ahead and convert this microwave oven into a mini refrigerator without any further delay. Let's get started. The Amazon links of all the refrigerator accessories are given in the description. These are all the parts which I just removed and maximum of these parts I can reuse in some of my upcoming videos. For now, among all these salvage parts, I think I will need this 220 volt AC cooling fan. Anyways, there is nothing on the inside and on the outside. Now it's just the casing and it's absolutely ready to be converted into a mini refrigerator. First I'm going to start with this refrigerator evaporator plate. or freezer plate or plate tube refrigerator evaporator or refrigerator cooling coil basically there are three types of evaporator which are plate type evaporator fent evaporator and bear tube evaporator the one you can see is the plate type evaporator and these are available in different shapes and sizes i purchased this freezer plate because it nicely fits inside this microwave oven Next, I will drill two holes for the pipes. So now we have these two pipes going outside which I will weld with the compressor and other parts. You can see the freezer plate nicely fits and it looks good. Carefully bend these pipes, avoid sharp bends. Next we need these two copper tubes or copper pipes. The thinner one is the copper capillary tube and it should be around 6 feet long. We will build these two copper tubes with the two pipes of the freezer plate. The copper tubes are nicely welded. It's a good practice to double check your welds before you move on to the next step. For now, it looks good. O 
over here I'm going to fix my compressor so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to remove this part of the casing the unwanted extra area is removed and now it's time to start with the compressor here I have this 1 by 10 refrigerator compressor which is smaller in size and it's perfect for building a mini freezer or a mini fridge or a mini refrigerator. This refrigerator compressor has two pipes on the one side and one pipe on the other side. The refrigerator compressors are available in different sizes and ratings. For more details read my article available on electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. Anyways, as a beginner, you may get confused about how to identify which one is the case charging pipe, which one is the suction pipe, and which one is the discharge pipe. This is what I'm going to explain with the help of an image so that you can easily understand because this is really important. This video is sponsored by Ultium. Ultium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Ultium Designer enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Over 35 years of innovation and development focused on a truly unified design environment makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Ultium Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Route it your way through any angle, tune for delay, push, slide and walk around faster than ever. Interact and collaborate with mechanical designers like never before in a photorealistic 3D design environment. If you want to get started with the Ultium Designer, you can click on the first link in the description. In the image you can see this refrigerator compressor has three pipes. To identify these pipes simply power up the compressor. First use a digital multimeter to check if there is any short circuit as you will never want an electric shock. It can be dangerous. So when you have powered up your compressor the two pipes will suck the air and you can feel it with your finger. If it pulls your finger then these pipes can be used for the gaze charging and for the suction. These pipes are internally connected so you can use the gaze charging pipe is the suction pipe and the suction pipe is the gaze charging pipe. The gaze charging pipe is also known as charging pipe or process pipe or gaze charging line. The third pipe will be the discharge pipe. You can also feel it with your finger and it will push your finger the discharge pipe has smaller diameter. So this was just a basic explanation to help you guys how to identify these three different pipes. The reason I selected this compressor is just because it nicely fits in this area. It really looks good and I feel like if it was designed for this casing. This is the copper check access valve with charging nipple. We will weld this with a gaze charging pipe on the compressor. I'm not good at welding so that's why I asked my cousin Yasahan to do it for me. I also suggest the same thing for you. If you don't know how to do the welding then find someone. The gaze charging pipe is ready. On the other side we have these two pipes. The pipe with the larger diameter is the suction pipe and the smaller diameter pipe is the discharge pipe. This is the copper filter dryer. It has a large opening on one side and a smaller opening on the other side. This copper filter dryer has two functions. The first function is it trap copper shavings. 
and second function is it capture any moisture present in the system. The filter dryer large opening side is going to be filtered with the discharge pipe of the refrigerator compressor. Next we will wrap the capillary tube which is coming from the freezer plate around the filter dryer. This capillary tube is 6 feet long. Fill the other pipe which is coming from the freezer plate with the suction pipe of the compressor. This is the refrigerator condenser and it is one of the main operating components that make up the cooling system on a standard refrigerator. As the refrigerant passes through the evaporator plate or freezer plate, it collects heat energy from within the refrigerator or freezer, leaving the inside of the unit cold enough for food and liquids. Its size selection depends on the compressor size. I did a mistake. I welded the filter dryer with the discharge pipe of the compressor. So I will remove this filter and I will weld it with one of the pipes on the condenser and the other pipe of the condenser will be welded with a discharge pipe. So the condenser is going to be welded between the filter and the discharge pipe of the compressor. First I am going to fix this condenser on the back side. Condenser is fixed and now I'm going to weld the filter dryer in the correct way as I previously explained. So here are my final connections and now it's time to check for any leakage. After going through all the welds finally we found a leakage over here. Now there is no leakage and now we are ready for the next step which is to insulate the freezer from the body and for this I'm going to use this styrofoam. You can see this is quite thick. So what I'm going to do next is to cut this using a nichrome wire. I insulated the bottom side of the freezer plate and all the other sides. I am also going to place some styrofoam on the top. To make it look nice, I spread it on the outside and inside but it made it worse. In the inside, the spray had a chemical reaction with the styrofoam so don't do it. I will fix it later, for now I will do other things. The dough is not making a nice contact with the body and this is not good as I don't want the cold air to escape, so let's do it the easy way. Now the dough makes a nice contact. I fixed these thin aluminum sheets on the two sides. It's good to have it on the big side too, but I had only a small sheet of aluminum. Anyways, now it looks good. Now we have this another box which is not perfectly but nicely insulated and it's more than enough for explaining my idea of converting a microwave oven into a mini refrigerator or mini freezer. The next thing which I have to work on is when I close the door it bounces back and since there is no locking mechanism so I will have to make it. I'm thinking of using these neotmium magnets which I salvage from a hard drive. Amazing! Now I can easily close and open the door without putting a lot of effort. These magnets are very strong due to which the dough makes a strong contact with the body and I'm sure 
the cold air will not escape. Now let's move on to the final step which is charging the gaze. I have connected these two wires which I will use to power up the compressor. For filling the gaze connect the pipe. Next turn on the compressor. Keep your eyes on the gauge and slowly start opening the cylinder valve. For now my target is 10 psi. Later I can fill more gaze if I will need. Anyways right now the pressure is 10 psi. Let's check the freezer plate. I'm using my Kaiweed Smart Digital Multimeter for checking the temperature. I can use my hand to feel the coldness but it's good to use a temperature sensor. This way we can know exactly how quickly the temperature is dropping. As you can see the freezer plate temperature is quickly dropping and it's a good sign which means everything is done correctly. Wow it's dropped to minus 3 celsius and it's still dropping. We can stop over here and let's check the suction pipe. This is pretty cool. There is no ice on the suction pipe. If you see ice on the suction pipe then it means you have put more gas or it may be due to some other issue. You can search on the YouTube. There are lots of videos about this suction pipe ice issue. Now it's time to remove the pipe and make some ice. Okay guys, finally here is my mini freezer. It's been on for the last two minutes. It's good to leave it on for at least one to two hours, but I'm pretty excited and I just can't wait. Throughout this test, I will use my smart meter for checking the temperature. So right now you can see the temperature is three Celsius. Initially the temperature drops slowly. So I'll be back after when the temperature drops below zero. I'm back after 20 minutes and the temperature is dropped to minus 3 Celsius. It's been 30 minutes and now the temperature is minus 5 Celsius. Even if it stays at this temperature, I can use it for drinks and fruits. Let's check what's going on in the inside of the freezer. Amazing, it has already made some ice. I will continue with the test. Okay guys, I'm back after two hours and let's see the progress. Wow, this is simply amazing. My first experiment is quite a success. It's an amazing feeling. I just built myself a mini freezer using a second hand compressor, some new refrigerator accessories and a salvage microwave oven. If you have watched this video completely, then I'm sure now you should be able to convert any box-like thing into a fridge or freezer. Anyways, I left it on for the entire night and now the result is just in front of you. I hope you have learned something new from this video. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.